3D printing has the chance to make ultralight backpacking even lighter. I've played around with a few different 3D printing projects here on the channel. Uh, 3D printed buck saw frame, 3D printed head pegs, carabiners, etc. And one area I really want to explore is if you can use it to make custom gear to suit your exact needs so that it weighs as little as possible. Take for example a staple in any backpacking kit a spork. Most people opt for a titanium one to keep it light. This one here weighs 18 grams. I found a promising model on Thingiverse, printed it off in PETG, and this one only weighs 11 grams, an astonishing 40% lighter than the titanium one. Now, the obvious question is, can it stand up to daily use? And to answer that question, for 48 hours, I ate all my meals using only this spork. Now let's see how that went. All right, first meal with the uh, spork. Let's add some chunky soup. Let's see how this goes. It's a little bit rough around the edges uh, where it's not printed so cleanly, where the 3D print supports were contacting it. Why are you making so much noise? Why are you being so hyper right now? Okay, well, it's been a few hours. I'm hungry again. So, uh, aside from dropping cheese down the fridge, next up on the menu to test out with that spork, uh, I'm gonna fry up some eggs for lunch. All right, look at that. Fried up five eggs. I got some hot dog buns that uh, I gotta use up before they go bad. I haven't used the uh, fork on the spork yet, so that's what uh, that's what we're using. All right, and yes, I do like some egg with my pepper. I know it's the same thing I just ate on the last clip, but it's a new day. This time it's bacon and eggs. So a staple for any backpacker is instant ramen. I'll let this cool down for a little bit and have all the noodles get situated in there. And then we'll use my spork to eat this. So this will be something new. Hot, like boiling water hot soup. So let's see how the uh, 3D printed spork handles this. All right, I got two packets in here. Oh man, this is super hot. So this isn't my first time using uh, PETG as a 3D printing material for something that's gonna be uh, exposed to heat. I actually run a bunch of uh, cryptocurrency mining rigs and uh, I do a bunch of hard drive mining and the stacks that the hard drives are mounted to, those are all printed in PETG as well. Two packets of noodles done and dusted. And it uh, it handles the heat all right. No warping, no major problems as of yet. It's holding up pretty well. Final meal of the day using that uh, spork. Can you help? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Wendy's chili cheese fries. And a spicy chicken sandwich. So, what are we having? Mr. Puffs! We're having Mr. Puffs. Mr. Puffs! And now for the final bonus round for eating things with the spork. I got myself some Mr. Puffs, peanut butter and chocolate. Basically they're fried dough balls with sauce on them. Oh, they're so good. Oh yeah, look at that. That was good. I'm gonna absolutely demolish these and then uh, I guess send you off to my final thoughts on uh, on a spork I made.
So I actually am pretty happy with how this thing's performing. It got stained a little bit from the curry powder and the ramen soup that I made, but I mean, that stuff stains everything. It held up to the heat of the freshly boiled water in the soup and everything else I threw at it. It's 3D printed in PETG, which is basically the same plastic that water bottles are made out of. And this specific material is marked as food safe. This one comes off the printer pretty rough as it needs its supports cleaned off and PETG is messy to print with. So make sure you clean it up really well so that no pieces come off into your food. 3D printed items in particular also have a risk of bacteria growing in the microscopic ridges and gaps in the layer lines, so be very careful if you do make one of these. You are responsible for your own health and safety. I clean mine after every use with hot water. I mean, I've only used mine for a few days now, but so far I don't notice any funk buildup. I just keep it clean and dry it out right away. This thing is made of plastic, so at the end of the day it won't be as durable as a titanium one, but it's got some good flex to it, and if you're not doing anything extreme with it, it seems to hold up perfectly fine. And a massive 40% weight decrease seems worth it, and that's even after I thickened up the model I used by 20% to increase its stiffness and durability. And even if it does break, you can just fire up another one on the 3D printer. If you're planning a longer through hike, maybe print off a few of them and spray sprinkle them into your resupply boxes if you're still worried about reliability being an issue. I mean, you can get the uh, Light My Fire plastic sporks as well, but I find those break really easily, and they're way too brittle. You can also get disposable ones, but those are pretty flimsy and really only meant for single use. This 3D printed one seems to be the best of both worlds. Lightweight with a bit of flex, reusable, and enough durability to hold up to extended usage. And while obviously a single sporks weight savings don't really mean that much, I'm excited to push and explore how 3D printing can lighten a backpacker's loadout even more, especially with materials like polypropylene, which has the lowest mass of any of the 3D printed plastics that I've come across. That, combined with fine-tuning the exact infill percentage of the item being printed, can have some pretty interesting weight decrease possibilities. I'm going to swap this 3D printed one into my kit and put it through some long-term testing. I'm really excited to see how this holds up to the winter when it becomes really brittle from the cold. The heating and cooling cycles will definitely be the problem there. There's a link in the description to the model if you want to print your own. A quick reminder to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I guess I'll see you guys next video.